Guys, no big green screen intro on this one. We're gonna take a look at a bunch of smaller knives. You guys know that I love big knives, but over the last few years, there's been a lot of knives that are coming in a lot smaller, and we're gonna look at 10 of them. All of these knives have a blade length of right at about three inches, maybe a hair over or less. And we're gonna start right here with this guy. And it's the Monterey Bay Knives Slayback. Now, this one is done in ZDP 189 core with carbon fiber handles. This has got a blade length coming in just at three inches measured from the scale, not from the pivot. So, you know, three inches of blade shape. But this is a very good knife for day-to-day -day cutting. As you can see, I use it a lot. It's got a lot of scratches on this. This was done in a 420J core with a, uh, I'm sorry, 420J jacket with a ZDP 189 core. So you've got a brilliant steel at the edge that takes an insane uh insane edge you know so at the front you can see here that it's been laminated it's a lot like san mai as a matter of fact it is san mai but sometimes you got to be careful saying it uh, monterey bay knives have had some of the most comfortable knives that have come in a long time this is a laconico design you're going to see a couple of knives that are repeats from companies this one's done in a liner lock the Monterey Bay knives have got some of the best pocket clips. They look plain Jane-ish, but they're done very well. And they are attractive in their simplicity. There's just the right amount of faceting on these. In and out of pocket, they're great. The action on this flipper is amazing. This has a little bit of a sway back to it. So it's got a really good grip in this. But if you're doing like pull cutting, like to make tent stakes and stuff like that, it's great because it just contours down in your hands, almost meant for that. Blade shape on it is beautiful, and it comes down to a really nice behind the edge thickness. Insanely good cutter, cuts way above what you would expect for a smaller knife, and the carbon fiber on it is just beautiful. I have not found one of the Monterey Bay knives that I did not like. I've liked them all. They've all been great. One of the other things about this is the way this ramps up and it kind of gets thick. It has a built-in thumb ramp. You don't need jimping on it because it's really secure. And the carbon fiber has been done to a point where it's beautiful, but it's also not slippery. So there you go. Your first knife, the Monterey Bay Knives Slayback designed by Ridley Conico. Let's move on to the next one. And it's the Kaiser Original. It's a small button lock. Mine is done in copper. You can see that the coating is starting to wear off on this. This is a great little button lock coming in. That's just that ting on that. These were done in 154CM and they came so sharp. I've sharpened mine a couple times. This gets a good bit of pocket time. It is a thumb stud only, and this has got a really substantial feel, but they did a lot of weight reduction on that copper. So even though it is done in copper and it is a heavy knife it's not as heavy as it could have been it just feels really manageable action on it is just shy of just the the drop shut but it's got a really good detent there is a steel area inside here that's milled in so that your bearings and everything are running on steel and you don't have you can see it in there. You don't have the copper giving way. The copper on it was done beautifully. It came with this dark coating. And I, at first I was on the fence about the dark coating. You see, we're getting a little bit of patina in some places. I was kind of on the fence about the dark coating, but as I've worn it, it's starting to get its own pocket polish and its own patina, making it exceptionally unique. Every one of these is going to be different depending on how you carry it. I absolutely love this knife. The 154 CM blade is done really, really well. It's a nice, just slight drop point, and it it comes down to a robust but not too thick edge. Definitely a comfortable cutter. It's got a weird weight distribution for me. I like a little bit more forward, but in this knife, it just works. Deep carry pocket clips, so you can carry this with other knives, and it's small enough it will fit in a fifth pocket or a watch pocket. Uh, nice deep carry, but it's not an uncomfortable pocket clip. You can slow roll it or thumb flip it and there's enough room here you can get on it and reverse flick so just an awesome shot i'm glad i finally got one of these i'd heard people talk about them kaiser has done some of the best button locks out there so you can't go wrong with this one there you go kaiser original let's move on to the next knife and it's the Ferrum Forge Knife Works Gent. And this is a knife. Mine's been customized. You're not going to find them like this. This was hydrographed by my little buddy Nico. Um, this was done really, really well. 
Uh, I think you can still find these. These were done by Mastrop. They're an S35 via a nice, nice, thin blade profile that gets incredibly sharp. Uh, nice edge on this, lots of space, good handles on this for a smaller knife. Uh, I got just about three and a half finger grip on this, but you can get up in that. It is a functional choil. It's a nice slender knife, but it doesn't feel too thin grip way up on it, a pinch grip and use it that way. This has got a really slim, slim pocket clip that just disappears in your hand. You can't even feel it. Uh, it's done in a liner lock. You can take these scales off. It's running on bearings. You can disassemble this and clean it, even though it is, you know, got these overlays. You just have an extra set of screws that can be complicated for people. But I like how they did the pocket clip, even though it's nice and thin, it doesn't move because it's got a broad mount here and it is ambidextrous. The action on these were great. Mine probably needs a little bit of cleanup, but on a small knife like this, it's not something that you're going to like have drop shut. It's something that that's how you're going to manipulate it with your index finger and drop it back down. The overall profile of this knife is comfortable no matter how you have it in your hand. Um, this is super, super comfortable to carry. It's nice and light. They did a good bit of work on this. And since the liners are thin, you've got you know, a, a thicker handle, but much, much lighter. This has been one of my most carried knives for a long time. So there you go. There is the Ferrum Forge Knife Works Designed Gent. So let's move on to the next one right after you guys hear from this video sponsor. Guys, nothing sucks worse than breaking a set of shoelaces. I mean, that's why when I was in the military, I always kept multiple sets of shoelaces in my locker, because if you break one, you got to replace them. Well, there's an option. There is a company called Tempered Trail that is offering almost indestructible laces at affordable prices. You can see they have a wide selection scrolling up here. Huge selection of colors and types that you can look at and pick. You pick your length, you pick your color style. Go check them out. My buddy Nathan has been has been kind enough to offer you guys a discount when you check out with my coupon code Crazy Sharp or with the link down below in the description. So thanks for sponsoring us, Nathan. He's a great guy. Let's turn this around and get back to the knives. All right, these next couple knives are a little bit harder to find. And this one is the small Sabenza. Now this one's really hard to find. This is the small Sabenza Tonto. You've seen it in a couple videos. This is a great knife. The Sabenzas are in any of the size factors really good. I love the large Sabenza 21. This is a small Sabenza 21. I actually would be doing a video about this where I do a, a polish of the washers. These are great. Titanium, frame lock, one of the best pocket clips you're ever going to find. Thumb stud action on this. They are super, super good. There is never an issue with a Sabenza. All your screws are the same. But then you get down to just how good the blade shape and everything are on all of these. This is the, the Tonto ones. I've said it. These are the only Americanized Tontos I would ever go after. The only Tonto pocket knife I would ever really seek out to get if I was looking for a knife. Um, but these things are incredible in hand. Just a perfect little ramp. Some people are like, oh, that looks weird because it comes up and pops up. But you've got some of the best jimping hand position on this is great for a small knife look at that drops right in i can get what feels like a full four finger grip even though it's not it's about three and a half but when you when it kicks forward in your hand like that just feels great all the blades are beautifully crowned they're ground exceptionally well they are all done in a hollow so you've got some longevity on the sharpening and lifetime of this knife and they have got some of the most beautiful aftermarket inlaid versions of their knives that you're ever going to find. So you just can't go wrong with a small spend. So there's plenty of opportunities to find these. I would recommend a couple of places, knifeart.com and places like that if you're looking for them. But this is just one of the most functional series of knives ever. And the small version is no exception. So you just can't go wrong with one of these. So there you go. The salt, small Sabenza 21 or 31, whichever is your preference. So let's move on to the next knife. And it's the Oaks Works EDX Elantra. I know you just guys just saw this in a video uh, not too long ago, but this is an incredible little knife. Um, it is, for me, a replacement for something that I thought I would like, which was the Olamic Busker, but the Busker just never felt right in my hand. So I have that same blade shape and angle that I loved on the Busker. It's very similar, but in a fashion that fits my hand beautifully. Nice little just plain kind of almost like 
kidney bean shaped handle on this that feels amazing in hand. You've got a nice little area that's ramped up for your thumb right here so you can get right up on it on a smaller knife. You've got a full choil here that you can get up into which also means that you don't have any issues with sharpening. So it's just amazingly good. It's done in M390. The jimping on this is incredibly good on that ramp. And then it just, it kicks your hand into a position a lot like that last knife, even though it's small. I've not got a full four finger grip. I don't feel like I've lost anything in the grip department because of the way it's contoured and the way this kicks back around. You've got some functional jimping here on this area to, that looks like a bit gives it that bolstered look, but it's also functional in a pinch grip. If you're back here, you've got really good control and it doesn't feel slippery. The handles are beautifully done with these inlays, reversible milled pocket clip that is really kind of slender and similar to what I like about the one on Ferrum Forge Gent. The action on these is brilliant. It's top flipper and thumb stud. You can thumb, so you can slow roll it. You can thumb flip it. You can reverse flick off of the thumb studs. Just a great, great design. One of the few front flippers that I like. I like the Ray Laconico ones and I like this. It's got kind of almost a sway back profile, but it's not. It's kind of an S. It comes up and then comes back down. Just an all around great performer. The knife cuts super well because it's got a nice broad blade that has been ground down to a beautiful Goldilocks zone behind the edge thickness. So there you go. The Oaksworks EDX Launcher. It's a little harder to find. You can only find it over at oaksworks.com. I'll have a link to most of these knives down below. So there you go. Let's move on to the next knife. And it's the Ferrum Forge Knife Works Stinger. Now this one's the button lock, which is my preferred one. This is a great knife overall. I loved the original Stinger design, but they were done in Nitno, uh, SM100, which meant that they were prohibitively expensive because that stuff is super expensive. This one is done in Nitro V. Stunning stunning blade profile on this. It's a nice enough radius that you don't feel like you've lost anything with no flat, but it radiuses all the way up to the tip. It comes down to this nice drop point. You got beautiful piercing tip. The finish on these blades are great. They're done in a button lock, which means that they're they just snap open. Uh, you can reverse flick if you've got smaller hands than me. You can reverse flick off this fuller. This also comes in a liner lock version that's available. Uh, just an amazing smaller knife. Now, this, I think, is the largest overall length knife on this video, but that's because the handle is a full, full handle on us. So you don't feel like you're giving anything up and you've got such good control. That's one of the nice things about these smaller knives is... Longer knives can fee feel out of sorts and like you've lost the control at knife. This you don't, none of these you don't. This you can get way up on this in a pinch grip, clear up here, and you've got some really good control on this knife. This is one of the thinnest ground behind the edge. So it just comes down all the way out of this entire video. This one comes down, I think, one of the best overall blade profiles, which means you got a lot of sharpening time in this before you start getting into thicker parts of the blade in pocket great deep carry pocket clip and this is done in a clamshell fashion which means you've got a lot less hardware the only reason you have so much hardware on the fronts is because there are inlays on this and it's a full inlay on both sides and they didn't do any weight reduction per se on the inside but that's because these are thick pieces of carbon fiber which makes us a very light knife so there you go this knife's two minutes are up let's move on to the next knife the Monterey Bay Knives EWC. And I put this one on the list because it has a very cool feature about it. This is called the Everywhere Carry because it's not a locking knife. So if you guys know, a lot of the prohibitions against folding knives in some countries like England and things like that aren't because of length and things like that. It's because the knife has a lock. Locking knives prohibited. This is not. This is done in, this is a rare version. This is done in tan micarta. Uh, you're gonna have a hard time finding these ones because there were only a few. And this one came directly from Sanford. Another beautiful pocket clip on this. Like I said, just gorgeous. The blade on this M390. Oop, I got my thumb in the way. M390 on this double detent. And this is a great knife for just a throw it in your pocket, like really light carry because it doesn't have any liners to speak of. You can see in here, it, like it doesn't have a lock. So you've got just one thin liner on one side with two detent spots. The blade on it, nice and thin. So it is a functional cutter. Uh, you don't have to worry about it coming closed on you if you're using your knife properly uh, because you're pushing this way. 
not a heavy use knife, but definitely a good, just throw it in your pocket. This is a pair, of, this is a knife that spends a lot of time in po in pocket if I'm wearing like a pair of basketball shorts where I want something light, but still want to be able to carry an EDC knife. Beautiful blade profile on this. The M390 on this is just screaming, screaming sharp. Another knife that comes down to a really good behind the edge profile. And it's still, even though it doesn't have a lock, a really functional day-to-day -day cutter for, for things that you're not going to be doing heavy use. Now, if you are going to be getting up on it, this would be one that I would say just for just devil's advocate. If something, if you're going to try and do some heavy use, that thing is going to break the detent. So just something to be a little bit careful of knowing what you're going to use this knife for. But there you go. The Monterey Bay Knives EWC designed by Ray Laconico. This is a, the Kaiser Mini Roach, and this is a knife that I absolutely fell in love with. Now, I have to say, a lot of times I will have a knife that is the larger version, and then I get the smaller version, and I like it. So this one, I had the full-size Roach, or the King Roach, I don't remember which, and I did not like it. I got this one. This was a gift from Jared over at Neve's Knives. And this absolutely changed my mind. This is such a better version. Gorgeously done, hollow, screaming sharp 154 cm blade. This has a removable flipper tab. The flipper tab is back on it right now because I just wanted to make sure that I truly did like it better without. But I love the fact that they give you that option without having to make two versions of the knife. Gorgeous reverse honeycomb handles on this with a gray G10 backspace. So the liners are married up perfect action on this. So good, but this is one of the most functional in-hand cutters you're gonna find. And that's why I like taking that flipper tab off because it just gives you a little bit of an option where you put your finger on that. You don't feel as cramped. Big, big forward finger toil on this. This screams through material and the finish because it's a stonewashed PVD coating as opposed to just a PVD has held up really well. I've resharpened this at different grits. It does great. The heat treat on this seems to be about perfect. The Matt Deegan design here, you can't go wrong with it. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. The only thing I would say is if you get this reverse honeycomb, just a warning, it has a tendency to catch on pocket material when you've got your pot, when you're going in and out of pocket. So just something to be cognizant of. But reverse flick, if you're going to do it with the flipper tab on it, beautiful. It's got the nice pop of color around the pivots with these pivot collars. Just an all-around great knife. This is one of my favorite small knives. Definitely one of my favorite Kaisers that I've ever had or carried. So there you go. The Kaiser Mini Roach. Let's move on to the next knife. The QSP Kestrel. And this is a knife that has really really impressed me. You saw it. This was on my list of knives that you need to ask Santa for. This is just amazing. I, I say it every time I talk about this knife, the best knife that QSP currently makes. Nice, gorgeous clip point 14 C28 and blade on this that is extremely sharp. I have not had to resharpen this yet. The finish is held up. It's another one of those knives that a stone wash lengthens the lifespan of your finish. Great coarse burlap micarta handles that just look rustic and amazing. The action on this is, as you would expect, incredibly good. It does not take much of anything to deploy this knife, no matter how you try. Thumb studs, flipper. I missed the thumb stud. That wasn't a nice ball. Thumb studs, flipper, uh, reverse flick. The handles have got a good bit of weight reduction in the liners, so that makes this an immensely light knife with an almost perfect balance. Just right there at the pivot, maybe almost a little bit heavy forward of the pivot, done in a liner lock. This thing cuts like a dream, and it's got something that I like. You kind of mask the fact that you've done a lanyard hole by making all these holes available for a lanyard. It gives it a nice look. It definitely looks cool. It adds to some weight reduction. And it goes along with the lines of the pocket clip. Not at all hating this. This thing is just all around one of the best functioning smaller knives. And I love the way that blade looks. But when it comes down to just cutting horsepower, this has it underneath the hood. It is an amazing little knife. And it's a small package. Closed, it's only four inches. So that's four inches with a three inch blade. So you got seven inch overall. This thing is just all around probably one of the best knives I've had come in in a very long time on top of the fact that 
they just did such a good job at making it look attractive. In and out of pocket, pocket clip is great and it's comfortable in hand. Running out of time on this, I try to keep to about two minutes, but it's hard to on some of these. So let's move on to the last knife, which I think you guys are gonna know what it is. And it's the CJRB Rhea. I have to say that I think that this might be one of the best knives. This was the knife and the reason it's in so many videos, this was the knife that really showed me how good a smaller knife could be. Nice thin profile, but it doesn't feel too small. It doesn't feel insecure in your hand. It doesn't feel slippery. The micarta on this, beautiful. I do have to clean this up a lot because I have it in videos, but it gets so much pocket time. It's done in a liner lock with a great, great detent. The thumb stud just barely sticks up, but you don't have to worry. You're not trying to put a lot of force on it. You just put your thumb on it and give a little bit of pressure and it flies open. ARRPM9 steel on this. One of my favorite, m m my favorite new budget steels. The grind on this is beautiful. It looks like a utility knife blade, like you would put in an X Acto knife. It's a small little pocket scalpel and it doesn't take up any space in your pocket. The nice thing about this is you can carry this pretty much anywhere and no one is going to say a word about it. If you like lanyards, you can put a lanyard. I took mine out because I just didn't like it because it rattled a little bit. But there's a spot where you can put the lanyard post in here where it just sits in there and it's got a hole through it. It's up here at the head of the workbench somewhere. Uh, I throw it in every once in a while. But just one of the best all around knives when you put the... the uh, the aftermarket, well, their, their additional like upgraded pocket clip, the titanium pocket clip on it, it not only makes it look better, but it's even more comfortable in hand and it feels good in hand the way it was. Uh, so just a great, great overall looking knife that you can't go wrong with. Like I said, lots of links down below to all these knives. If you haven't checked one of these out, probably one of the best little knives you will ever ever have so let's turn us around we'll do some final thoughts send you out about your day there you go guys that was 10 of the the best small little knives that i have here at the house there's a lot of knives out there now that are coming out that are super good in that three inch blade length and it's a good overall use and i got news for you i found that i can get away with doing a lot of the things that i was doing with bigger knives as well, if not better, with a smaller knife. So there'll be links to all those down below. Guys, that's the, it on this one. Not to make this take any longer. You guys know that they're sponsored. I threw a sponsor in on this one. Uh, you can check them out. Coffee Grand Coffee Temper Trail. They have a link down below that has a discount built in, but you can also use coupon code Crazy Sharp, all one word, over there or at Fair and Forge Knife Works, Rosecraft Blades. Uh, Lots of affiliate links from all the major knife vendors you want to look for. I have an Amazon store. Take that link, pin it to your browser. Look at joining the membership where I do giveaways for some of the tiers. I do exclusive content for everyone. I have a private Discord and I've built a public Discord that is down below. There's a link. Please join that hangout. It's kind of dull. There's only 15 people in it right now. But if you all join, it will get better. Guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I'll see you in the next video.